What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the Acer Nitro Blaze 8 and 11. So the 8 is right there, the 11 is right here. We're going to be doing some detailed hands-on testing, checking out the preliminary software. Keep in mind these are pre-production units. The final units may have a little bit better fit and finish and these have some keys and features on them that are not currently used or, or whatnot. You know? So just know that these are going to be refined a little bit more and improved upon in the final production unit versions. Okay, so what are the basics around the Nitro Blaze 11 and 8 and why would you consider these versus say the ROG Ally or other competing products? So first of all, let's talk about the processor and the specs. So this has the Ryzen 7 8840HS and the 780 FX card. So you can see uh, right here on the spec sheet, we've got some detailed specs already. Um, but this is an eight core, 16 thread CPU, which is gonna be able to play a lot of games. And the 780M is gonna be able to play a lot of games as well. And that 8840HS is a powerful enough CPU. You can just use this as a general computer as well. If you just wanna hook this up to a monitor, using a USB 4 for a, like a, a dock system. Um, hooking up peripherals on here. We got quite a few ports actually that will allow you to use this as more of an actual laptop. Uh, and computer compared to something like the Ally that has this. Now, the, uh, there's a lot of pros and cons with going with something that's as big as the Blaze 11. And this thing is pretty big. Let me show you. So I've got big hands. I'm like six foot one. And when I take this thing in my hands, it's still huge. All right. It's still very, very large. Let me just to 0.5 so we can hold this a little closer. Um, but uh, these controller sticks on the sides actually do pop off. There's these little buttons you press and they slide right off. So press this and it comes right off. And then there's these little connectors on the side that help transmit the data. But this is a wireless connected into, this wireless, wirelessly connects into your Blaze 11 and there is a little middle piece. So if you pop both of these off, right? You set this down, you can use these to still game wirelessly. Um, I'm not sure if this is currently set up or not. Well, I didn't test this before this video, but let's find out. So I can still game wirelessly right here in Psychonauts 2. And uh, so this is really cool. And there's a middle piece that turns it into like a, a solid controller. So you can actually use these as like an actual controller on the go and set up the Blaze 11 in kickstand mode, which let me go ahead and show you the Blaze 11 in kickstand mode. I'll reattach these. Very simple to reattach. All right, and so there's a kickstand right here on the back. Pop this out, and now you've got yourself a portable little uh, handheld that has the ability to sit upright on its own on a table or a desk or something. Um, and then you can, you can hold the controllers remotely in your hands to continue playing the games. So overall, the Blaze 11 is really cool, but the, the number one reason to consider the Blaze 11 over something like the, the Ally and the Lenovo Go is just the screen size. Like that's it, it's a really high quality 500 nits, 10.95 inch display that is a uh, high color gamut, high refresh rate, 120 hertz. So it's gonna be just phenomenal to play games on. The downside is that we're talking last gen hardware here with the Ryzen 8840HS. So we're talking, um, you know, compared to the new uh, AMD Z2 Extreme, we're talking about less graphical compute units, so probably about 33% uh, slower in terms of graphical performance. And then we're also talking about an increased resolution compared to the 1080p display of the ROG Ally and a lot of the other competing products use a little bit lower resolution display, so it's easier to play those games. And the, so just know that you're probably gonna have to do more upscaling and fiddle with more settings to get some of the games to play properly with the Nitro series, the eight or the 11, because uh, they're both QHD displays, I believe. Just making sure, and yes, they are. Now, on the inside, we do have a 2280 SSD slot in the Nitro Blaze 11, uh, and you can see all the full specs right here. If you guys want to pause and look at these specs in detail, but let's go ahead and review the ports on this as well. So the ports on the top of this guy, we've got a power volume rocker, 
USB-C, and one of these is a USB 4, the other one's a USB 3.2. Then we have a Type A and a headphone port and a micro SD card slot, and then a big fan exhaust. So on the bottom, we actually do have a, uh, what looks like a keyboard dock adapter, uh, but we don't have any official word from Acer about any peripherals that might support this, but no, there, there's potential there to have this turn into uh, more of a clamshell alternative to a full PC. Um, down the line. And another thing with the Blaze 11 is we have Windows Hello support with Windows IR here for intelligent face uh, login, which is really, really cool. Now, let's go ahead and set this back up here and let's pull the Blaze 8 out. Well, I guess we'll put this here. So the Blaze 11 and the Blaze 8 side by side, uh, you can see it's it's a quite a big difference in size. <laughs> I mean, and if I, were to, if I were to bring the Ally here, the Ally would also be noticeably smaller, probably only about to here on this guy, because increasing the screen size really dramatically increases the size of the overall device. Now, the main differences between the Blaze 8 and 11 is going to be the screen refresh rate, 144 hertz on the Blaze 8, 120 hertz on the Blaze 11. We have the same specs on the inside, except the SSD size is a 2242 on the Blaze 8. So there's less SSD options for the Blaze 8. And then the other thing is the price point. The, the Blaze 11 starts at 1100 and the Nitro Blaze 8 is 899 or 900. So $200 difference in price for the increased size of the device. And the port placement's also a little bit different. On the Blaze 8, we have two USB-Cs on the top, one USB 4 and then the USB-A headphone port and micro SD card slot are located in the bottom. So the port placement is a little bit different, and of course there is no detachable sides to this. Like these do not come off on the side of the Blaze 8. This is one solid unit. So I would say it's a less versatile device compared to the Blaze 11. Um, so let's go ahead and play a couple of games. We've got the Forza on this guy. So let me go ahead and set you the wide angle. There we go. So this is uh, Forza Horizon 5, I believe. I don't know what the settings are right now, but everything's playing really smoothly. Hey, we're gonna pass someone. Okay, no, we're gonna ram, we're gonna ram someone. <laughs> I think I'm going the wrong direction right now. Let's see if we can do a sliding U-turn. There we go. Sweet, there, now we're going the right direction. <laughs> oh, crap. All right, so uh, everything seems to be playing really well. Let's check out the settings, if we can, for this, uh, I'll go to 1X. And I don't know. I don't know what we got going on, but something, it's announcing everything that I say. I think the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the accessibility options have been announcing everything that I do. Uh, okay, so let's go down to video, and you can see that right now we're at 1912 by 1200. Frame rate target is 72 FPS. No FSR is enabled. Interesting. But uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, those are some pretty good settings if we're doing 1920 by 1200 with no other things enabled to do upscaling or anything. So anyway, the... The graphics is also set to low and medium, a mixture of low and medium. So there you go. That's the Blaze 8. Let's go ahead and just show you a little bit of gameplay here on the Blaze 11. So this is Psychonauts 2, and things are playing well, running through the, the game world here. Everything looks really smooth and is very responsive. Ergonomically, both of the devices feel pretty good in the hand. I'd have to actually play around with them for a long time to really get the ergonomics truly figured out. But overall, the device is, uh, I think, very promising ergonomically. I think a lot of people would like using this for a long time.
So that's the so that's the overview of the Nitro Blaze 11 and Nitro Blaze 8. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There will be more videos to come. I've got the Predator series over there and the Nitro series over there. So be sure to subscribe and like the video and come back for more. We'll see you guys soon. Brandon, out.